Okay. Wow. Okay, so let me ask you a question about goodbye. So if you know someone, and for example, you want to say goodbye, is there any special phrase that you normally use? Or no, you just say goodbye. Mm, uh, I um, I usually say see you on some, uh, see you next week, uh, see you or next Monday or something like that. Yeah, of course. So great. So see you. And if it's not going to, you know, if you're not going to see him or her again, so what do you say? So we don't say see you because you're not going <laughs> to, maybe you don't know. So. Okay. I can say goodbye. Uh, hope to see you soon. Of course. Hope to see you again or something um, like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Of course, yeah, goodbye. So goodbye, bye, and bye-bye. So third of them, some good phrases, common phrases that we normally use in order to say goodbye to someone. But, okay, as I discussed before, there are different ways, formal, informal ways to say goodbye in English. Okay, so first of all, of course, uh, you don't say goodbye solely. Of course, you add expression statement, not the same. For example, it was good to see you. Or for example, have a nice day, have a great week, or say something like this. Okay, for a common, a common formal, of course, it's uh, especially, especially to say goodbye to customers or people who you don't know, you don't know. So have a nice day, that is really common. And have a great rest of your day. So both of them, this is formal. Let me write them on the board. Just let me share my screen. OK, well. So. So the first one. Have a nice day or have a great rest of your day. Okay. What uh, when we use these expressions? OK, for example, when you go to a restaurant, when you go shopping, OK, and this is a very common way for, for example, shop attendances or, for example, restaurant staff to say goodbye, especially they say to customers. So, for example, when you go to the restaurant, normally restaurant staff tell you, have a great rest of your day or have a nice day. So that's great. And of course, you can make it a bit specific. So you can say, have a nice evening. OK, or have a great week or have a great rest of your week. So you can say uh, it's something like it was uh, nice meeting with you. Have a great week and I'll see you, for example, next Tuesday. Again, if you won't see someone for the rest of week, for example, me and you. OK, now we see each other and after that I won't see you for the rest of the week. I can say ah, it was nice meeting with you. Have a great week and I'll see you next year or have a great rest of your week. So because I won't see you. OK, so great is good, but you can change it. Great, brilliant, fruitful. So all these words can be used instead of great. So have a great weekend, have a great, have a brilliant weekend, have a fruitful week, so everything. And another formal phrase. So this formal expression is actually appreciate uh, something like it's something like is appreciation or something like, for example, say nice to meet you or something like this. OK, so but it's not really common. So we say until, so I'm not going to talk about this. So it's until, so it's better not to talk about this. But you know, when you want to see someone, actually something like a formal expressions, if you want to continue walking, talking, seeing, okay? I look for what? 
to, for example, see you. I look forward, especially for writing. There are, as I told you, there are formal phrases. So after that, we'll discuss some informal and casual phrases. So I look forward. For example, you can say, uh, thank you for your time today. I look forward, for example, to see you. Or I look forward to our next session, to our next meeting, especially when you have meeting, when you have, for example, you are a teacher. Guys, thank you for your time today. And I look forward to our next meeting or next session. Okay. Well, this is another phrase. And very warm, common, good phrase. Take care. We normally use it, and that's really good phrase. So take care. It, that is a really warm expression that can be used uh, in professional situation as well as more casual. So you can use both formal, informal. Okay. So I see you when I get back from, for example, vacation. Take care. So formal, informal. That's really good and warm. Take care. Bye bye. So something like this. And something that you know, we normally say it was nice meeting you. Just you know, nice to meet you or nice meeting you. Both are correct. So no matter if it's nice to me, it was nice to meet you or it was nice meeting you. So you can use this. Uh, but you know, when it is actually if this was the first time you met the person, you can use this actually phrase when saying goodbye. So it was nice meeting you. So nice meeting you because as I told you, for example, when you know someone, you don't say it was nice meeting you. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you because we know each other. So if it's the first time that you met someone, you can use this. It was nice meeting you. And I hope, for example, continue, I don't know, walking together. OK, so I hope see you soon again. So something like this. And uh, so it was nice to see you. So you use this expression to say goodbye to someone you already know. So nice. It was nice to see you. So you know the guy, you know the person. So you say, well, nice to see you, OK, or nice seeing you. Both are right. So nice to meet you, someone who you don't know. Nice to see you, someone you know. Bye. It was nice seeing you. So that's OK. Mm. OK, so this actually this part. Was about formal actually um, ways to say goodbye, so. And now let's talk about daily conversations. So casual, normal, so people who we know. See you later. See you later. See you soon. See you later. Common and the widely used expression. Say goodbye. OK, in more casual situation. So for example, I'm going out for lunch. See you later. Excuse me, I have a question. Of course. Uh, I, I'm a little confused about the thing you have just said. Um, uh, it was nice to see you. We use for the people we already meet. We already know, of course. We already oh. know. And yeah, of course. For yeah. example, me and you, we know each other and say, ah, oh, that was great. That was, for example, it was not seeing you because we know each other, but this is the first time that you meet me and you don't know if you will meet me again or no. You say it was not meeting you, meeting you for the people who you don't know or you haven't met before. This is the first time you don't know them. Nice to see you, friends and relatives and everyone who you know, colleagues or everyone who you know. Oh. So it was nice meeting you and it was nice to see you is different. Of course they're different. Of course they're different. So because normally people say 
Nice to see you. Why it's nice to see you? Because we say, for example, uh, you see someone, you meet someone for the first time, and people say, nice to see you. Is it really nice to see this person? We don't know because we don't know this person. This is the first meeting. So I say, it was nice meeting you. I met you. But when I know you, nice seeing you. It was really nice seeing you again. So mm -hmm. see you later. Yeah, they're different. Meet. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I see. Mm. of course. And um, when you actually want to say that, uh, you want to see someone, okay, but you know, don't intend to make plans. Like a neighbor, for example, you have a neighbor, of course, uh, you can use a phrase to someone you sometimes run into. Suddenly, for example, ah, hi, run into means see suddenly. For example, in the street. For example, your neighbor. Okay, so there is no plan. See around, mm. see you around. Mm. For example, you see your neighbor. Hi, how are you? How's everything? Okay, that was, so see around because you don't know if you're going to see this person again, maybe suddenly, so maybe you run into, means you see suddenly, so maybe you run into your neighbor, so say see you around for your neighbors, for example. And uh, you may hear see ya, see ya. This is shortened of see you more casual and uh so we can say this is my stop see ya so see ya friendly more mm -hmm. casual yeah friendly this is a shortened more casual version of either of the previous actually two phrases like see you around or see you later both of them see you around so instead of see you around or see you later because see ya just this and this is more casual so, for example, it was nice uh, running into you, see you around, or it was ru nice running into you, see ya, justice. And uh, when you want to go, you want to say, I'm leaving. There is a phrase, uh, I've got to get going, but it's not very, it's okay. But we say, I'm off. Guys, I'm off. So first of all, let me write it. I've got get going. Let me write it here. So for example, guys, I've got get going. So you can say this expression, this phrase, when you are ready to leave, but leave a social gathering. Okay, so actually you let people know you're ready to say goodbye. For example, I've got to get going and, for example, I have to wake up early tomorrow morning. So it's something like this is a social gathering, not really friendly. For example, you have, you're having a gathering with your colleagues. OK, everyone, I've got to get going. So this one is good. But shorten, got to go, got to run. So. Gotta go. Gotta run. So both of them. So you can say both of them. These are shorter and more casual versions of I've got to get going. And they often, they often use when you are in rush, you're in hurry. So gotta go, gotta run. So wow. Oh, it's already five. Got to go just as so I'm in rush. So I say this is more casual. So it means I've got to get going. I'm ready to leave. And uh, another one, another casual way to say you're leaving a place, for example, and you're ready to say goodbye. I'm heading off. I'm taking off. So I'm heading or I'm off. So. 
heading off or I'm taking off. Well, we normally say I'm off. Okay, I'm off, guys. Okay, goodbye, I'm off. So it means I'm leaving. So this is more casual. I'm off is better, I'm more common. But I'm heading off. This is another casual way to say you're leaving and you're ready to say goodbye. For example, I'm heading off. And for example, I have to, I don't know, have dinner with my family to tomorrow. So, or I'm off. And uh, have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Have a nice night. Have a nice time. So, have a good one is the best. We say. So, you don't want to actually use a specific phrase. Have a good one. It means evening, night. So, you can use it in general. So, have a good one is really good. We'd rather use this one. Okay. Well, and do you have any questions so far? Mm, no, not about this one, but I have another question. Of course. <laughs> Thank you very much for sending me some files. <laughs> but no. the problem is that I cannot open it. I oh, download okay. it. But when I open, there are some problem, and I don't know how to solve it. So maybe I share screen and you help me. Oh, so let me see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, of course you can share your screen. So why not? Yeah. I, yeah, this is uh, the file. Hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is one. Yeah, I download. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I opened the files. Yeah, let me see. So, mm, no, no, this one download. Yeah. And this is here. But when I click in the files and this can see okay this is obligated open the document friends okay there, ah there is no application set to okay because of look you need to have an application mk we mkv so this is actually your file format because of this because your system actually is not able to open this actually but you know this formats because of this so you can do something you can search google for example the application or uh, to download or to play MKV files, OK? And then you can download and you can open them. Yeah. So. Yeah, because so. of the format, sometimes, you know, some formats are unreadable and some devices, like, for example, maybe your laptop, OK, actually doesn't have an application or a program to open this type and this format so you do only if you can't if you couldn't download it just tell me and i try to change the format of the files and send you another format so that you can watch them mm, yeah that's not good but maybe i, I think i will ask my student ah, to help you <laughs> of, co of course of course so just you can Google it. That's really easy. You can Google it. So for example, a program or application to open MK week files, and then you can download and it will be open. Oh, so yeah. we can find MK. The format. Format. Format player, for example, for laptop. Uh, can you see to MP4, for example, you can see of course, I can understand this is weird to me, so <laughs> you need to read it. Yeah, player. Can you see MKV player? I can see something like this. So I think you can download it and then open the files. Yeah, maybe this one. Of course, of course, I don't understand because it's in Vietnamese, but I think yes, because I can see the, you know, this download sign here. So I think this one. Yeah, we have download here, I think. MK player. I I don't know where the 
Ta, so I'm, I'm checking. So MKV. So this is Blu-ray. No, MKV. So another one. So which? Oh. So maybe please scroll up so that I can see the beginning of the list. OK, so Skype. OK, my, OK, and I think yeah, let me say OK, so I think Microsoft Word scroll up again, please. So I think you have this one, so just let me uh, these players I think can help you. For example, total video player pro for Mac. So if you have Mac or another, yeah. so total video players. Yeah. Maybe it is one. Or maybe another video player. You only need to add a video player so that. It's being downloaded? Yes. It's yeah, great. Right. Oh. Then you can try it. I think it can be helpful. Why? Is it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Can I see it? Okay. Mm. This. Okay. Already? Yeah, I can see something. It's a bit hard to see it. <laughs> It's very hard to see, but I can. Okay, total way. Okay, so you can save. Save. Okay. And now you need to check if it's needed to be installed or no. So if no, now you can open the file. Uh, so we. Mm. Okay. 
I assume that I couldn't do it. <laughs> ah, you couldn't. So let me. Uh, so if you couldn't, so let me do something for you. I try to change the format. So change it to maybe MP4. I think it's yes. easy to yeah open it. So because you normally have media player, so I try to change it and then resend. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Well, so and so if you stop sharing, I can share my screen. <laughs> okay, so share my screen. Well, okay. Well, okay. So, keep going. Yes. Oh, very good. Well, so another one. So good night. It's it's really easy. So good seeing you, huh? Good seeing you. Good, easy, casual. So friendly. Good seeing you. This is more casual version of it was not seeing you. It was not seeing you. Is a bit. I don't know, it's a bit casual, but not, you know, really usable for friends and something. Good seeing you. It's good. It was good seeing you. Okay, let's get together again. So maybe. And instead of saying good night, just night, night. Okay, for example, I see you in the morning, night. Just night, sweet dreams, night, or some other actually phrases that you can use, but it's your choice. Of course, you know, you already know the other phrases and uh, have fun. So now, if the person you're talking to is going to do something fun, you say have fun. So you can wish them, for example, well with this phrase. So you can say have fun, but only for the people who actually are going to do something fun or uh, for example when you want to wish actually the person well be well be well okay so be well it's actually this is another way to say goodbye okay or sign up that means you wish the person well for example, thanks for listening to our, for example, music. Be well or something like this. So, but physically, I said be well. It means I hope, I wish you will be healthy. Every well, for example, everything will be great for you. So, and keep in touch. Okay, so that's really good to use this phrase. Keep in touch is another expression. This is the way to tell someone that you want to stay in contact with them. And it's generally used when you won't see them for a while, but want to talk by phone or email. So keep in touch. I'm moving, but you, but keep in touch. It means, I don't know call me or send an email so and uh, another way don't be a stranger come over anytime it means anytime that you want you can visit me so don't be a stranger don't be a stranger okay another way but uh, keep in touch is better okay just uh, yeah. But uh, don't be a stranger. We will use it in which case? Uh, let me say, it means keep in touch. Okay, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you actually, you're talking to someone and actually you want to say that stay in contact. Okay, for example, just this is not the last time that we see each other. Just don't be a stranger, visit me again, call me again, keep in touch, it means. Okay, so you can use in this situation, so exactly the same as keep in touch, but yeah. keep in touch is more common. Mm. Yeah. And if you had a good time with someone, 
for example, with friends. OK, uh, you can say this was fun. This was fun. So you can use this actually phrase to tell a friend or, for example, a date that you had. For example, a good time. So you can say, OK, this was fun. This was fun. For example, yeah, you had a date with someone. OK, thank you. That's so fun and we should do it again. We should do it again. Maybe why not? And well, so another one. So the others I think are a bit old fashioned, so I'm not going to talk about them. So and uh, some actually maybe collocations. Uh, collocations are really useful. First of all, let me talk about, let me explain the definition of collocation in English. And they are very, very usable, common. Uh, the combination of words means collocation. So for example, you normally hear this combination together. So collocation means the combination of words. So keep in touch, keep, when I hear, Keep, OK, keep in touch. I expect for the rest of it. So this is a definition of collocation. They're really usable in English. So for example, uh, there is a slang. It's not saying I've got to get going. OK, you can say gotta, as I told you. And you can say I got a jet. I gotta hit the road. This one is good. I gotta hit the road. So let me write it here. So gotta, gotta, I've got to. It's not saying I've, for example, got to get going. Okay. You can say I gotta, I gotta hit the road usable okay so this has been fun but i got a jet or you can say i got a jet they are the same so it's been fun so i got a jet or i gotta hit the road so both are usable okay I hit the road um what does it mean it I means no. It means I've got to get going and leaving. This is actually something like slang, idiomatic mm -hmm. phrase. So when you say hit the road, I got to hit the road. It means I'm leaving. I need to go. Mm -hmm. Well, and another slang. Another oh, slang. Yes. They are the same. They are the same. So let me say something about, first of all, do you know the meaning of slang? Yes. OK, so you know this. So they are slang. It means vocabulary that is used between people who belong to the same social group or know each other very well. So we have some slang and slangs are informal. You know, they are informal. OK, now. For example, instead of saying I, so maybe the way that you write them, the way and the word that you use are different from the meaning. Jet, what I mean, jet is jet, so, and hit the road maybe is different, okay? But the combination, this is a definition of collocation, the combination of this group means something else, okay? So, for example, um, when we say, I got a jet, I need to leave, especially when I'm in a rush. That was fun, but I got a jet or I got to hit the road. It means I need to leave. I've got to get going here. OK. And for example, see you later. See you later. Another slang, just later. Just later. So, for example, this is very casual and I've got to go. Or, for example, you can say, oh, OK, I got to hit the road later. Just see you later or catch you later. So all of them is later, but slangs. So don't use it in formal and, for example, situation. 
OK, and uh, for example, I'm heading to class. I'm going to class. OK, peace. You want to say goodbye, but this is a bit. I don't know. It's belongs to very old fashioned style, so we don't use it and uh, casual way. Actually, of letting people know you're leaving. I'm out. I'm out of here, so. I'm out, it means I'm living. I'm out of here. This these two, especially I'm out is really common. I'm out, I'm living. So. I'm out of here, but out of here, we don't say out of. I'm out of. I'm out of. I'm out of here, which means I'm out of here. So I'm out of here. And have a good one. Have a good day. Take it easy. So take it easy means. Have. A good one. So this expression, so take it easy, is similar to have a good one and of course encourages people uh, to relax, enjoy their day. So take it easy, enjoy your day. Take it easy. It means have a good one. Enjoy your day. So another one. And as I told you, I'm off. Another one, very common, useful, I'm off. Very common, useful, another informal way uh, of letting people know you're leaving. I'm off. OK, guys, I've got a busy day tomorrow, so I'm off. So I'm leaving. And OK, I think yeah, we talked about all phrases that you need to know. Well, so uh, but as you know, you have some all the phrases that can be used when, for example, writing, for example, when you're sending email letter, or something like, of course, the other ways to say goodbye, you know. For example, if you're going to send an email to someone, how you end, how you finish your letter, what you write? Mm. <clears throat> um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Very good. So this is closing sentence. It means you close, but you need to say something maybe respectful at the end of to end to finish so like best regards for example or sincerely yeah you know you're truly okay so there are different phrases that you know you know them you know them yes of course very really. Yeah. yeah, since but you know the different phrases. For example, sincerely, best regards, too formal. So yours truly, formal, okay, similar to sincerely, and kind regards. So we use them in order to write an email. For example, send an email for people who we don't know, or I don't know something like a business uh, talk or conversation. But you can wishing you the best. It's okay. We know this guy. So best wishes. A bit informal, so better to use. Until the next time, look forward to seeing you. So until the next time, it means. So especially, it's really ideal where you anticipate future interactions or meeting. It means you know, see you later. Maybe I hope to see you again. So until next time, you can use these phrases. Okay. Well. This is all about saying goodbye. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If no, we're going to move on another topic that I want you to talk about. Yeah, if I write to my cousin. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, instead of saying sincerely or uh, best regard, um, no, what, what works that so, I can use to show? So for example, friendly. Casual, friendly, all the best. All the best is very good. For example, for both personal and professional contexts. So all the best with cousin. You're writing. And uh, I think 
regard, you know, sincerely regard, they are very formal, so we don't use for, I don't know, best wishes, personal, you can use in personal or professional uh, settings, best wishes, so it's okay. Wishing you the best is very good. Wishing you the best for friend, for cousin, okay, and um, Ah, and another one, fondly, fondly. This is very warm, very good, actually, word that you can say, a warm and personal closing, suitable for letters to friends or relatives or people who you know. So fondly is good. Or until the next time, until next time, so which means look forward to see you again so these phrases can be used when writing for your uh, to your cousin friends acquaintances and any other question yeah okay yeah. well <laughs> so actually i decided to do something uh from next session we will have some audio files as well so because it's really important to listen and interact so i want you to improve your listening skills as well as speaking both are important so we will have some audio files in order to listen and answer a few questions related to them but here i want you to talk about uh, actually your job so this is because you normally it's actually i think a question that you are asked normally so when you see people and it's really important how to make your conversation, how to keep conversation going. OK, uh, let me ask you the first question. Why do you think, of course, you're a teacher? OK, and why do you think you are the right person for this job? <laughs> I, <clears throat> when I was a child, I don't think I will be a teacher. Uh, but um, when I studied Chinese with an old teacher and I study a lot from him, the knowledge that I couldn't study from school. And I, th I thought that it's very useful for people to uh, to have a manner, to have a good manner. And at that time, he told me to be a teacher. And uh, <laughs> I thought that I will, uh, I would be a teacher for uh, a few years. That's it, the way to, uh, to, to, to thank to say thank you, to thank for his knowledge. Yeah. But I, I didn't uh, think that I teach until nowadays. <laughs> and I, I love this job. <laughs> Very good, of course. So just some points. Uh, when you were a child, you didn't, you know, that's really important to use the correctness. You didn't think that you would be a teacher or you could be a teacher. But you know, after, you know, studying, you learned lots of things, okay, from the teacher, uh, which is your Chinese teacher. And until now, so far, so I've learned lots of things from this person so far. It means until now, up to the present time. So, so far. And, you know, so you think you think you are a good fit for this job. You are a good fit for this job. So good fit, really good phrase to use when you want to say that you are the right person for the job. So it's very good. And uh, it's something like, for example, if you want to show your enthusiasm 
and also show you want to help, I don't know, the people to be successful. You can say, for example, I think I bring a lot this job. I'm sure I bring a lot. So I can do lots of things, for example, for people. And uh, tell me about your job. Do you consider your job as a hard or easy one? So it's difficult or easy one? Mm, I, I don't think this job is difficult uh, because I, I have the, a, a lucky to study with that teacher. He's a knowledge mm. teacher and I studied a lot from him. The knowledge that the other teacher didn't teach. And when I teach, my knowledge is specific. So um, I can, many, many students love the knowledge. Why? Yeah. Other, they, uh, because when <clears throat> um, people study Chinese, most of people, just study speaking and listening, that's all. Of course. But Chinese traditional attract people by their content and not many people can explain about the good in the culture, the history and a lot of things in the culture of Chinese. Mm. So when I teach Chinese, I give a lot of story uh, to the students. Yeah. Of course, of course, that's great. So I do agree with you totally. So, but I want to ask another question. If you, if your job, you know, for example, teaching Chinese, if you consider that you found it as a hard or difficult career job, would you? maybe uh, pack, pack it in, uh, pack in something means stop doing. So stop. Pack, yeah, let me write. So pack something in, for example, pack my job in. OK, it means stop doing it. So if if you found it, if it was a difficult job, you know, or have you ever thought about, you know, I don't know, stop doing your job or pack in your job, pack in your job? Yes, I did. Uh, several years ago, when my teacher, he, he's the, um, so, yeah, he's the head of my uh, <clears throat> of Chinese, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but in in the school, there are many department, and he's the head of Chinese department, my teacher. And when he uh, was retired, another one um, <clears throat> do that his job. And that one is not yeah. a good person. Uh, his knowledge is not wide, is my teacher. Therefore, he do many bad things to uh, with the student of my teacher. Most of the teacher in the department have the same uh, knowledge, but his knowledge is not the same. He he only know simplified Chinese. He doesn't know traditional Chinese. Therefore, he doesn't like teacher who knows traditional Chinese. And he make a lot of bad thing yeah, to right. us. Yeah. At that time, I talk about stop teaching. But uh, 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 at that time, uh, friends asked me to open a um, hotel. Mm. 
because my family well, had a hotel yeah. and I have experience about um, manage a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at that time, I talk about being the hotel manager again, but when I saw a lot of letters students sent to me, yeah. and I, I thought that if I um, manage a hotel, I can have a lot of money, but I, I cannot have a lot of love from students. I cannot have fun in the job. <laughs> so that's why I, I, um, I refuse to open the hotel with my friends yeah, and keep uh, being a teacher, but I change the school. Yeah. yeah, of course. Thank you. A good answer. So just let me boost your answer a bit. So the first thing, so after your actually your, uh, you know, the retirement of your first teacher, someone else, you know, or the teacher or the tutor took his position, took yeah. his position. But this person wasn't, wasn't as knowledgeable as Oh, let me write it here because you can. Oh, let me put this here. I don't. Okay, as knowledgeable as your previous teacher. So, yeah. when you want to say that someone, for example, didn't have, you know, the same knowledge as another person, you use as as. That's great yeah. structure to compare equal things the things that have equal values so the people you know wasn't for example were not as knowledgeable as your previous teacher so it made you frustrated so disappointed frustrated so that you decided to do something else and you decided to open maybe you thought about opening your uh hotel and being manager of your hotel but after that you thought about it and you figured out you figured out that you couldn't get this passion this love from your students if you if you were for example a hotel manager so passion and love so you can get this passion of and love if you couldn't get of course if you were not a teacher so you decided to continue your career as a teacher and job or career so you decided to keep your career going as a teacher or tutor we say tutor or teacher okay so as as is very good and uh, how is the structure as adjective as or as adverb as so it depends on the verb we use adjective or ad adverb if you use be am is or or was and were you use adjective is as knowledgeable as or for example if i have another verb like drive okay regular irregular verb okay i can use adverb for example i drive as carefully as my mom so i drive as as my for example mom okay so uh as you can see here i have an adverb because of drive because for regular and irregular verbs i can't use adjective between as as so I drive or I don't drive. I don't drive as carefully as my mom. It means my mom drives more carefully than me. So you can use as as to compare things or people who are in equal values, who have equal values.
Okay, well, okay. So, let's skip this topic. Okay, for the next session, we will keep going talking about this topic later. Okay, any questions? No. Okay, very good. So, uh, just this, and uh, just tell me, you will inform me if you couldn't uh, download this actually program or application to open the files, then I will change, I try to change the format of files, okay? Yes. Thank you so much. It was really good time with you again. And mm -hmm. uh, have a great, brilliant week. Let's see you <laughs> next you session. Very much You're, for your welcome. You're most welcome and see you. Yeah, see you next week. Of course, yeah. goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.